In 2023, Apple released iOS 7. And people lost their minds, not in a good way. The internet absolutely obliterated it. Designers mocked it. Either said it looked like a cheap Android skin. Some even claimed it was one of the worst visual updates Apple has ever shipped. But then something unbelievable happened. That ugly redesign quietly shaped the next decade of design across the entire world. UI, low-cost branding, even movies and product packaging drifted into a flux simplicity. It was one of the most influential design decisions in Model East. Even though nobody saw it coming. It's now in 2025, Apple did it again. Except this time, the reaction has been even more decisive and the implications are even bigger. Almost everyone is missing the real reason. Because liquid glass, whether you love it or hate it, might be the beginning of a massive design shift. But to understand what's happening now, you have to understand what happened before. In the early 2000s, people were using computers for the first time. Software was intimidating and everything felt abstract. So Apple needed digital interfaces to feel physical. That's where skeuomorphism came from. The idea that digital tools could resemble real-life objects. But this wasn't a design choice. It was a psychological breach. People didn't know what a notes app was, but they definitely understood a yellow legal part. They didn't know what a phone icon should look like, but they knew what a phone was. So Apple covered everything in leather textures, stitch borders, green felt, glossy buttons, all to help you feel comfortable with their products. But the real magic, Apple obsessed over every single detail. The Aqua interface in early Mac OS didn't just look like glass, it felt like glass. In fact, here's what Steve said about it. And we call that new user interface Aqua because it's liquid. One of the design goals was when you saw it, you wanted to lick it. Every button had weight, every window cast shadows. This level of attention wasn't decoration. It was onboarding. It was how Apple taught the world how to use computers. But this approach, as successful as it was, had a major flaw. Scott Foster, the man behind iOS 6, pushed skimorphism to its limits. Everything looked like an object you could touch. The calendar looked like leather. The notes app had torn paper. Heck, even a game center looked like a casino table. And that popped for a ton of people. But as phone matured, something strange started happening. Realism stopped helping and started holding things back. If everything had to look like the real world, then software can never evolve beyond it. Why should your calculator look like plastic keys? Why should your music app resemble a tiny CD rack? Why should your calendar dance to be a stitched leather? So the physical world is limiting the digital world. And when you're building the future, the last thing you want is the past holding you back. Then came the moments that changed everything. In 2012, after the Apple Maps debacle, Scott Forstall was fired. And with that, nature internal shift followed. Suddenly, Johnny Ive, the mind behind the iPhone's hardware, was now in charge of software design True, And Johnny Ive had a radical different philosophy. He believed digital interfaces should be safe for real-world constraints. Flat, clean, minimal, no emotional textures, no skeuomorphic theatrics, no unnecessary decoration. To him, skeuomorphism wasn't war. It was outdated. So when iOS 7 launched in 2013, it was a total departure. Icons became simple shapes, gradients flattened, shadows disappeared. Now colors? It had a lot of color. It wasn't an update. It was a revolution in UI design. And whether people liked it or not, the world shifted with it. Flash design didn't stay on Apple devices. It went everywhere. Android adopted Material Design, Microsoft embraced flat tiles, logos across every industry collapsed into two-dimensional minimalism. And the problem wasn't that the flat design was bad. The problem was that it became the default. Suddenly, every fast food chain had the same minimalist logo. Every startup used the same pastel color palette. Every luxury brand flattened their identity. Flat design made everything clean, but it also made everything identical. And once everything becomes identical, nothing stands out. The design world that hit a city, and most people didn't realize it. Fast forward to 2025, Apple announces Liquid Glass, its first major overhaul since 2013. Instead of flat static shapes, everything now bends slight. Windows refract the background, UI elements shift with perspectives, surfaces look fluid, translucent, and dynamic. And just like 2013, people hated it. They said it was too much, too bright, too distracting, too transparent, hard to read, but too true. The complaints were almost identical to the iOS 17 backlash. But is the twist. This redesign isn't meant for 2D screens. It's meant for what comes after. And once you see that, everything about this redesign starts making a little bit more sense. Apple has been slowly preparing for a world where digital objects exist in physical space, not on the top of it. This is the world of AR. Vision OS wasn't a one-off experiment. It was the first chapter. 
And this is the fundamental problem with Flutter design. Flutter design doesn't work with documented reality. When placed in a real environment, Flutter elements look like stickers. They don't blend, they don't cast shadows, they don't react to light. They feel thick, but materials like glass do bend. Light passes through them, they refract, they glow, they adapt. Glass is believable in 3D space. Liquid glass is Apple's first mass market UI style, designed for mixed reality future. Not because it looks cool, but because it works with physical environments. Your phone is being prepared for air long before you get air glasses. And once you realize that, the next question becomes obvious. In 2013, Apple had less market share, fewer users, and far less influence. And despite that, they flatly redesigned the roads, the visual language of the world. And in 2025, Apple is bigger. The iPhone is the cultural default. Vision OS is emerging. Developers rely on Apple's design guidelines more than ever. So if Apple is shifting away from flat design, what happens when the rest of the world follows? We could see the return of depth logos with dimension, AR first branding a revival of playful design, not skeuomorphism but something entirely new. Digital objects that don't mimic reality but behave believably inside it. And that leads to the most interesting version. Flat design was perfect for the era it was created for. That screen, clean layouts, 2D apps. But the next frontier isn't 2D. The next frontier is spatial computing, digital interfaces that live inside your environment. And flat design doesn't translate. It wasn't built for depth, it wasn't built for perspective, and it wasn't built for light. Liquid glass isn't the death of flat design, it's the graduation from it. This is the first design language created for a future where digital things feel like part of your world, and not overlays on top of it. And whether you love it or hate it, that future is coming fast. Flat design helped billions of people understand the digital world, but the world has changed, the tools changed, the medium changed, and now Apple is changing with it maybe faster than we are ready for. They all fear what looks unfamiliar. They mock it, they criticize it, they reject it. But that's also what they did in 2013. Liquid glass might not feel comfortable today, but neither did iOS 7 until it became the new normal. And if Apple's history tells us anything, what feels strange today might be what defines tomorrow.